Let us now take a look at T lymphocytes or also known as T cells. T cells are produced or made in the bone marrow like all red and white blood cells. The name T cell comes from the organ where they mature which we call as the thymus. They then later on are distributed to the lymph nodes and spleen and some are found in the blood. The thymus is this one. The thymus is just above your heart and is about the size of a deck of playing cards. Most T-cells are made when you're young, so kids have bigger thymus than adults. It is also where T-cells are screened to get rid of any that would attack the healthy cells in your body. In this, in this slide, we could see two different types of T-lymphocytes, but actually there are two more. The one that are not included in the slide and in the syllabus is known as the... Memory T-cells are different from the memory B-cells as they directly target and kill cells infected internally with the same foreign entity that it has previously combated. While natural killer cells, on the other hand, have a similar function to cytotoxic T-cells, which we will talk about in a few, they destroy compromised cells like tumor. And they are called as natural as it is thought that they do not need activation to work. They are also known to target cells which are missing self proteins on their surface membrane. So now let us take a look at this one. CD4 T cells are also known as CD4 T cells are also known as helper T cells. These are the ones that are being affected during HIV infection. The CD4 in their name corresponds to a protein. On the other hand, we have here the ninja. <laughs> and this one is known as killer T cell or also known as cytotoxic T cell. Rather than having CD4 proteins on their cell surface membrane, they have CD8. In here, we could see the action of those two cells. And again, we have here a chart or a flow diagram on how they work. So first and foremost, we need to have an antigen-presenting cell with antigen. And these antigens would be exposed or they would be attaching to the cell surface membrane of this cell. When this one comes in contact with a T cell, this one will cause the activation of this T lymphocyte. This T lymphocyte could either become a T helper cell or a T killer cell. T helper cells or helper T cells are part of the adaptive immune system, which has the ability to learn about, adjust against, and remember different types of infection. They are most probably one of the coolest members of the white blood cell group because they are similar to how, let's say, an FBI or maybe an intelligence agency works. All helper T cells contain a protein on their surface, again, as we call as CD4. They uncover information about new infections and spread the word among other cell types within the community of immune cells so that other cell types prepare for the battle against this infection. They are the most responsible for more immune responses. These types of immune responses are as follows. 1. They promote the growth of the killer T cell. 2. They can regulate activity of phagocytes and call upon other white blood cells for reinforcement to counter massive infections. 3. They can modify the peptide chain of an antibody. 4. Required to regulate formation and activation of B cells. And 5. They can suppress excessive immune activities and thus are believed to prevent autoimmune diseases or allergies. Perhaps the best example of the importance of these cells is demonstrated with human immunodeficiency virus infection. HIV mainly targets CD4 cells or the helper T cells, but can infect other cells that have but can infect other cells that express 
the same protein like macrophages and dendritic cells. They cannot activate the cytotoxic killer cell and cannot switch out peptide chains in the antibodies produced by B cells. This reduced number is always associated with reduced resistance to infection and is also associated with aging. Killer T cells, on the other hand, has so many names. I'll list it here. But their main function is to 1. Kill cancer cells and 2. Find and destroy infected cells that have been turned into virus-making factories. But to do this, they need to tell the difference between inf infected cell and healthy cells with the help of antigens. As we could see in this image, the T-killer cell meets the antigen on the surface of the infected cell, which is this one. The killer T-cell kills the cell it attaches to by a specific process. Also do note that the receptor on the T-cell will exactly fit the antigen of the infected cell. If it does not, then this killer T-cell will not be able to kill the cell, per se. How does the killer T cell do its work? First and foremost, as you could see in the image, it seems like this cell is like a balloon that lost its air, right? In order for this to occur, you need one, perforin. Perforin is a substance that creates a pore on the cell surface membrane of the the cytotoxin will go directly inside the cell through this pore it destroying it and any viruses inside will be killed as well this is the reason why killer T cells are also known as cytotoxic T cells. The pieces of destroyed cells and viruses are then cleaned up by macrophages. This one is often referred to as Serial killing. The green cell you see here is a killer T cell of the immune system which is attacking the cancerous red and blue cell. You can tell when the killer cell has recognized the cancer cell because the two dots move around and contact the target. The killer cell then spreads out over the cancerous cell. Passing the video through a filter makes the killer cell look yellow and allows us to really see how it focuses on the cancer cell. These killer T cells are constantly hunting down dangerous cells throughout the body and destroying them. 